Hello, I'm Barry Sullivan, Program Director for the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department Heads Association. It's my pleasure to introduce this spotlight session by Agilent Technologies with uh, Ron Harrison as our speaker. Ron? Thank you, Barry. Good morning. Thanks for showing up early on a Sunday. Uh, it's a great audience that we have here. Some faces I actually recognize. So just to introduce myself, um, I guess, again, Ron Harrison, Agilent Technologies. I do market development for Agilent, and I actually focus on uh, a subclass of products they have called the modular products. So it's interesting, the modular product's more of a hardware thing, but this presentation today is, is going to be more of a higher level, uh, almost software-centric presentation. So first I want to uh, start things off by thanking ACETA for actually inviting the industry to participate. Um, first, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to share these ideas and trends, but uh, probably more importantly, it's this partnership between academia and industry uh, which has created a virtuous cycle, right? Uh, research and academia are almost pushing industry to push new technologies, to develop new technologies, which in turn, uh, companies like Agilent are creating these technologies for academia, and then academia is actually using them, and it just basically enhances this virtuous cycle of innovation. So, topic of today's presentation, innovating next generation wireless, and communication technologies with integrated design, validation, and test strategy. So it's a mouthful. I almost prefer to go with uh, accelerating systems design and accelerating the innovation cycle. So let's just keep that as the focus, but it will be on RF and communications. All right, so starting things off, and I have to say I'm usually an animated speaker and I like to move around, but I've, I've been confined to the booth area here, so bear with me on that one. But uh, in terms of uh, technology today, I don't think anyone's gone anywhere without hearing about the iPad every day. Either you're reading about it, hearing about it, or you're playing with your own iPad. What I wanted to, to talk about with, specifically with the iPad is all of the technologies that are baked into this system. I mean, many of us take it for granted. You know, we expect the Wi-Fi to be there, the Bluetooth. I mean, we don't give consideration of the complexities of designing this system. Um, you know. It's fascinating that they integrated 4G LTE. It's amazing that they're able to integrate it with the rest of these communication technologies. And probably more importantly, they're able to turn this product out in less than 12 months. They're on a 12-month cycle with these technology refreshes, which is amazing. So really, how can we accelerate this, this design cycle for products and in turn accelerate innovation? So I want to talk about uh, systems design, system design process. So really, it's, it's kind of when you're designing a system, I guess, in industry for, for product people like us, um, you're thinking, well, you come up with the system level requirements, right? And then what's next? Well, you can't eat the elephant whole, so you bite it into pieces. So you start doing the component level requirements. And then you design and implement the components. Then you verify these components. Then you integrate them all together into a system and you do a system level verification, right? So this linear process seems intuitive enough. You've heard it before. You've probably even seen the, the V model of systems design. But really, the V model is interesting because it, it actually, when you look at this linear process this way, you can see that, oh, there's a duality between system level design and system level verification. Component level design, component level verification. The other interesting thing is this whole timeline is, is really split up. You've got the EDA world on the design side of things, and then you have the measurement world on the verification side of things. So this poses, this poses interesting challenges when you're trying to accelerate this, this, uh, this design cycle for systems. So it's interesting. I'd, you know, I often talk with my old uh, college roommate who's a uh, PhD researcher for MEMS at the University of Waterloo. And uh, one, of the, one of the days I was talking uh, about this exact thing. I said, well, how can we accelerate the system design cycle? And both of us being hardcore engineers, we got into the minutia, all these little details. And then we started getting into the specifics of the scenario, what type of system it was. And basically went on and I realized, you know what, we didn't solve anything. I mean, this is, this is you know, we got into details that, uh, you know, we can't get to that level. 
And what's funny is I showed this diagram to my brother, who is a business graduate from the University of Western Ontario, and I said, so how would you shorten this? He has no engineering background, although we're an engineering family. He was, he's the one, uh, I guess you call it black sheep, who went into business. Um, he looked at it, and then he, he had this kind of you know, smug smile, and he says, well, just fold the one arm of validation onto the design arm, and then just shorten it. And I'm like, wow, that's actually surprisingly simplistic, yet that makes sense. Can we actually fold validation onto, onto design? In other words, integrate measurements into the design flow. And then can we, can we actually integrate system level design with component level design? Shorten the design validation arms, fold validation onto design. So he did what uh, me and a PhD from Waterloo couldn't do, which is abstract this down to two simple bullets. So Agilent, obviously, we're, we're more interested in than this, this high level high level idea. How do we make this a practical reality? So in terms of practical implementation, well, one, OK, let's integrate the system level and the component level design. How can we do that? Are there software tool, modeling tools? Uh, next, in terms of wireless systems, there's a lot of separate domains at play. You know, the RF domain, the baseband domain. Um, you know, there's, there's even other things that uh, I'm not going to go into. Uh, and then obviously measurement, integrating measurement into the design loop. So this idea, if we could do a synthesize, analyze, measure, this cycle of synthesize, analyze, measure, while we're designing, basically we could effectively shorten the product, product development cycle. Go right to the, the slide here. So Agilent has been designing RF and wireless communication systems for longer than I've been alive, you know, over 60 years, I'm sure. And they've come to the same realization. How can we shorten this RF and communication and wireless design cycle? And actually, they set out to accomplish five main goals, and I listed them on this slide. How can we quickly capture system-level design concepts? in an easy way, an intuitive way, in a, an abstracted way. We're talking about abstraction. How can we accelerate RF and baseband co-design? Co um, implementing model level characteristics. So you're talking about potentially impairments. You're talking about uh, components, filters, up converters, down converters. How can you model all of these things? And then connect it to test for rapid iteration. And they, they, they almost viewed it as a bunch of different design spaces. Hardware, the PHY, the system, the overall system, RF and baseband, how do we integrate this all together? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to package this idea, these goals, uh, into those three, basically the three practical implementations that we talked about on this slide here. So they've been working on this challenge for, for quite a while now. I could easily say a couple decades in terms of software development, in terms of trying to find the right way to approach this. And really what they, what they came up with was, well, let's do a system, basically an electronic system level graphical implementation where you could actually see the signal flow between these high level system blocks. So what that does, it abstracts all the details of this R from wireless communication system to basically a system level. But the next step is, OK, we need to integrate this, this high-level system overview with the specific individual modules. And the modules are basically the models of your, of your system. You're compartmentalizing it, but you're integrating it into the overall system. So here I've, I've integrated or I've, I've displayed just a standard, uh, almost like a physical layer communication chain where you've got your, your raw data, you're converting it to uh, basically baseband data, coding it and, and whatnot. Uh, then you're sending it to the, the RF unit. You've got channel impairments that you've got to overcome. You're basically designing your baseband and your, your RF circuitry to overcome a lot of these channel impairments. And then it's basically the, the corollary at the other end when you're decoding and obtaining that data back again. So 
basically in the, I guess, the turn of the century, they, they came out with a product called System View, a software product that actually did this, high-level modeling. So the next, the next challenge that, that really they wanted to tackle was integrating this idea of co-design between the RF space and the baseband space. Now, these engineers think completely differently. They don't like to talk to each other. Um, often they use different tools. They refuse to use the other person's tools. Some do their modeling in C++ or VHDL, other than Verilog. Um, or, you know, as in the previous presentation, MATLAB or potentially LabVIEW. So there's a bunch of different models that these, these two groups will use. But what, what happens is you can see the one group, so I'll use the laser pointer since it's available. The one group here, the baseband group, they go through developing their algorithm completely in a bubble. The RF signal group, they're doing the same. And sure, there's supposed to be some sort of interface architecture that, that they've designed so that they could link together. But what often happens is they get to system verification and they realize it's not working or there's not, not the right level of integration. And basically, they have to iterate. And they iterate on their own. And this, this is a very costly, um, costly cycle, obviously. So here on the right, obviously, I listed some of these challenges. But uh, probably what this results in is obviously the expensive iterations, over design of subsystems. And really, it's hard to overcome errors, because where are the errors? Are they in the baseband data or in the RF data? So the next. The next solution is, well, why don't we integrate this? Let's do co-design. Let's have the baseband designers and the RF designers working in the same, same tool, but have access to their individual, their individual models. So System View actually includes built-in models. But of course, that's not good enough. You have to have custom models. So it includes custom models that uh, users can actually develop. Um, take that a step further, and, and it includes models that you can actually extract from hardware. And I, I want to save the integrating hardware in the loop part of things uh, for bullet number three. I guess we're in two. But uh, this is this here, having an environment where everything is integrated, allows you to do these quick integration cycles. And what that basically allows you to do is go through this first pass very quickly. So last but not least, I mean, the hardware guy spent all this time talking about software. Where's the hardware integration? So right here, we talk about this idea of R&D, design validation, manufacturing. In industry, these are, these are typical times and typical costs that you'd see for a systems design. Um, you're looking at it, it's not, it's not cheap. This could be upwards two to three million dollars to get a product to market. And you're talking about several iterations, turning three months, first turn six to nine months. Um, it could be a while. So the point is, how can we actually integrate hardware upstream? So I want to show you three different models of integrating hardware into your design flow to actually accelerate your system design. So the first is, let's say here is our, our device under test. And it's either a base station or a handset or something. You've got your radio unit. You've got your digital processing here. Um, system view, you can actually push data directly to the hardware, a signal generator. This signal generator will give you the exact signal that you're trying to, you're trying to test your, your, de your device with, whether it's a prototype, a model, whether this is whether this is hardware or software, it could also be software modeled in System View. Um, both, you could interchange them, and that's kind of the, the interesting thing. And basically, you can actually analyze, analyze a signal, again, put it into RF analysis software. In this case, it's the 89600 waveform analysis software. And then, close the loop. Did we get the results we expected? Is our device producing uh, the right models, or are we, do we have a challenge in one of these sections? And the interesting thing is you could target each of those sections individually with different pieces of hardware. Logic analysis hardware, 
It doesn't have to necessarily be the, the radio hardware. So that's, that's one example. Another example is, let's say, beamforming, MIMO type applications. Same idea here. Here's your signal flow through system view into MIMO. And once you have that basic system overview, you can actually push it to hardware and divide it through two chains. So if you've got your baseband, your baseband being generated here, set to two signal generators going through your device, and then you could actually analyze. So here I, I kind of talked about almost two similar things, right? You're pushing data to a piece of hardware. But is it possible to integrate data into this design flow? So this is basically kind of a, a summary of, of what we talked about, but I'd rather get to the use case. So we're talking about integrating models. But the powerful thing is you can actually integrate the X parameter extractions from an NVNA and import that directly into your software to get real world models. So as you're developing your software, you have access to real world data. So I want to talk about uh, power amplifier design and specifically digital pre-distortion. So I guess just quick poll. You guys have seen digital pre-distortion, understand the concepts and yes, E and C E. <laughs> So now with the new standards, you're talking about LT Advance, 802.11 AC. These are extremely wide bandwidth standards. Not only that, you've got crest factors and peak to average power ratios, which are much, much higher than before. This actually poses a lot of challenges for power amplifier designs, which are in everything. Cell phones, base stations, anything, any piece of communication equipment, you're going to have a power amplifier. So DPD, digital pre-distortion, the idea is, well, what if I distort the signal on the output of my device such that it cleans it up for the signal? I mean, it makes sense, but how can you, how can you practically implement this quickly without doing trial and error iterations? Well, here is basically your feedback, your feedback loop. So basically, system view actually includes digital pre-distortion, um, I guess, modeling, where you can actually put it out to your power amplifier extract what your power amplifier is producing, import it back into system view, and it'll automatically calculate what the, um, I guess, most appropriate uh, digital pre-distorted waveform should be. So this is an example of integrated directly, hardware directly into that, that design loop, which is, which is fascinating for me. All right, so I've been given my warning, so I'm going to summarize. Um, I guess today, you know, this probably different than the other sessions you've seen. Um, I really wanted to focus more at a higher level, the idea of systems design, the concept, and the idea that, yes, we can actually shorten this, accelerate this system design process. Take the idea of this linear, this linear way of building products, folding it onto itself, and doing first pass iteration of RFs and wireless systems. So. I'll let you read the last few bullets. And I guess at this point, I'll open it up for questions. When does it cost? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't actually know the price of System View. I'll have to. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm a marketing, marketing engineer without that, that knowledge. I'll be able to get the price for you. But. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>